So in today's video, we're going to be going over how and why we calculate DPS. First things first, we're going to kick this straight off. We're going to go into the burst DPS calculation, which is very, very simple. It is quite literally damage divided by rounds per second equals your DPS. That, that's it. There's nothing else to it. Now, I've seen a lot of people do some weird and wacky things with this, okay? There is no other way to do it. It's not that there's like a right or a wrong way or you can do it this way and get a different result. It's quite simply there is one equation for it. Go to Destiny, same equation. Go to World of Warcraft, same equation. Go to Diablo, same equation. Go to Warframe, same equation. This equation is also not something that gamers have come up with. This here is what's called an EPS formula, events per second formula. It's a really, really simple equation. It's, yeah, take it as you wish. And this equation helps us as a society calculate a variety of different things. Here is a list of things that this equation helps us calculate. Ohms, voltage, amps, flow, cycles, torque, pressure, ping, speed, acceleration, thrust, firewall access, internet, circuits, propulsion, brain activity, even fucking gravity, and of course, damage per second. So if we start messing with this formula, then we might want to tell doctors and physicists that we found a new and better way to calculate gravity, and that brain activity they think they're seeing isn't actually really there. On the plus side, flat earthers might be right, and I actually already know a few people that might be classified as brain dead. So, win-win, I suppose. No, that's not how it works. It's an already time established tried and tested formula we're going to stick with it because it actually bloody works so hopefully this isn't too intrusive but we've got a lot to get through very quickly so blank spreadsheet i'll be putting a link in the description all i need to do is find the base weapon damage and the rpm we're going to go for the p416 once i found it i'm going to put it into the first value in the spreadsheet which is that pink dump box thing so that's the base weapon damage we're going to name it p416 we're also going to put in where it's just below where it says body crit, that blue box that says zero and then one below it, blue again, zero. That's where RPM goes. After that, we need to calculate our all weapon damage. If you don't know where this is, go to your stats, go to the third tab along the left hand side. It's like it looks like a normal red core and you'll see all weapon damage with whatever weapon you have equipped and it will range depending on your build. If you're a SHD 1000 with six red cores, you will have 100% all weapon damage. If you have an expertise level 20 weapon, you'll have 120% all weapon damage. So you put that in there. Specialization comes from your, obviously, gunner, sharpshooter, etc., etc. All weapons have their own intrinsic damage value on them. The first stat on your AR is going to be 15% or whatever value it is AR. So that goes to 0.15. Your total weapon damage typically comes from a talent. For example, composure is 15%, so 0.15. You then need to calculate your crit. And if it's at 100, that's 1, 200, 2, 150, 1.5. So 1.64 is obviously 164. Headshot damage as well. This is all on your stat screen. 0.9, damage to armor, 0.08 for 8%. Detox, foxes and then obviously on the weapon 0.18 amp one depending on what you're using it will change we have 15 i'm running spotter on this imaginary building and amp two on the weapon i have flatline so amp one 0.15 amp two 0.15 this will now give us our body non-crit head crit head non-crit and our head crit one thing to note with this is despite the fact that everything is technically a multiplier, we typically state that weapon damage and all weapon damage, the difference being all weapon damage will affect every weapon. Weapon damage is things like Fenris, 10% AR. We typically denote these as additive, despite the fact that they are technically a multiplier, it just helps to be less confusing. All multipliers of the same type add together. Despite what I've just said, with all weapon damage, so you've got 15 here, 15 there, 15 over here, these will all add together to give you a separate multiplier. Things like AR damage, 
when you have your AR equipped, they get lumped into that as well. When you don't have your AR equipped, it basically just vanishes. This is kind of also why things like One Piece Sokolov, One Piece Fenris, One Piece Overlord, bloody bloody blah, 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 are typically classed as suboptimal because you don't tend to run two of the exact same weapon on your build. So the moment you swap, you lose that value. However, there is one caveat to this, and that is crit and headshot. If you get a critical headshot, your headshot and your crit do not multiply together. These will add together, despite the fact that they are on their own individually multipliers. When you get a critical headshot, they add together to form a critical headshot multiplier. It's weird. So once you found your base weapon damage, you need to times this by your total all weapon damage plus whatever weapon damage you have that will apply to that weapon and this will give you your on-screen weapon damage so if you pressed i or opened up your inventory and highlighted your weapon your weapon will obviously say not what its base weapon damage is it will give you a different number once you have that number you will then need to multiply that by your total weapon damage, remembering that all of them add up. So obliterate total weapon damage and vigilance total weapon damage, 25% each. These will give you a 1.5 multiplier. Same with DTA or DTH. They can occupy the same space. So it'll either be DTA or DTH, depending on what you're hitting, times DTOC times your amps. Now, with your amps, do not add them all together. If you've only got one amp, just do it times that amp. If you've got two amps, you need to times your multiply your amps together and then times them by that final product. Or you can do them all separately and individually, depending. So you could do like 1.3 times 1.15, or you can just do 1.3 times 1.15. This will give you another number. You then multiply after detox by those amps. That was a non-crit on the body. For a body crit, the exact same formula basically, but after total weapon damage you times by your critical hit damage. For your head non-crit, exact same, but rather than critical hit damage, we're going to go for headshot damage. And for your head crit, after total weapon damage, we're going to times by our critical hit damage plus our headshot damage. Once you have these numbers, we can start working on our true DPS, which is our body crit times our critical hit chance plus our non-body crit. You then take your RPM, divide it by 60, and then multiply that by the number that comes out of this equation on screen. That will give you your DPS. If you want to do it for your headshot crit, you do the exact same again, but you do the headshot non-crit and the head crit. And yeah, the exact same thing. So why... Is it important to, or at least for someone, it really does depend on your value of importance that people actually know how to calculate DPS. First and foremost, it is just simple facts. Like if someone comes around and goes, oh yeah, but e Eagle Bearer is the highest DPS AR in the game. We have the calculations and the math and the facts to prove that it factually isn't. Secondly, for me personally, Utilizing these formulas, I'm able to determine as to whether the build idea that I have just rummaging around in my head is even worth it before I've even started farming it. And if it doesn't meet my expectations of what I want out of a solo build or a multiplayer build, I just don't farm it. It allows us to make accurate, concise, logical and objective concessions in our builds. If we drop one stat by 4%, but we increase another stat by 6%, depending on how those stats interact, interact, is it going to be a net increase or a net decrease in DPS? Is it allow, going to allow us to do more? If we drop our DPS slightly, but we increase our survivability by a rather measurable chunk, is it actually going to increase our overall performance or is it going to decrease our overall performance? Can we completely forego survivability and just whack everything into DPS and just rely on the old trope of enemies don't shoot back when they're dead? There is of course the obvious calculations for what or what is not meta, what is best in slot under X circumstance. Anyway, that is going to be it for this video. I will be doing a follow-up for sustained DPS. In the meantime, have fun, good luck, and don't die. It's bad for the health.